Dr. Mark here, and I want to talk to you about colors, which is why we are at the W3 Schools HTML tutorial on colors. Now, we just finished talking about hexadecimal numbers, and if you go out to this tutorial, you will find that we have lots of color charts. Now, a color on a computer is a combination of three colors. Red, green, and blue. Now, if I have absolutely no red, green, or blue, I have the color black. And if I have the maximum amount of red, green, and blue, I have the color white. Every other color is some combination of those three hues. I'll increase this type so you can see it a little bit better. So if you take a look for the color black that's pictured right here, the hexadecimal code starts with a pound sign to signify a hexadecimal number and then it's followed up by six zeros. The first two are indicate zero red. The middle two zeros represent no green. The last two zeros represent no blue. So if we take a look at the next one down, our red, our red is signified by a pound sign FF, maximum red, and no, zero, zero, no green, zero, zero, no blue. The green, again, is a hexadecimal number, zero parts red, total FF parts green, and zero, zero parts blue. FF, by the way, in base 10 is what number? 255. Okay, now, what about yellow? How do we achieve yellow? Well, yellow, I'll highlight it here, is FF, FF, 0, 0. Total amount of red, total amount of green, no blue. Okay, that's how we get yellow on the computer. So, given these combinations, these three numbers that can vary from zero parts to 250 parts, we can get 16 million different colors. I can't even conceive of 16 million different colors, and yet, I'm sure there are many more in the world around us. Now. You can blend colors by changing these hexadecimal two-digit numbers to represent red, green, and blue. Or you can just go over to one of two other resources at W3Schools. Color names is one of those. And if you take a look, it's alphabetical order by color name. Color values gives us color charts. And sequence by their hexadecimal values. Okay? Now it's not all 16 million, but there's a lot there that you can choose from. Now another, I prefer work with the color names. So let's go to that chart and I want to show you a little something. Let's say we end up with a color that we just really like. Let's say this purple, this dark slate blue, which looks purple to me. Perhaps I want to see different shades. So I'll go ahead and hit shades 
and there I get all of the shades of that color. So maybe what I'd like to do is work with that color and have a very light shade of it. Perhaps this D8, D8, E8 shade for my background. And maybe I want to use um, this one, the 483D 8B value for my text. And so the colors are complementary, but yet they'll contrast. Well, that's one thing that I could do. Let's go back. And let's take a look again at dark slate blue. Let's look at mix. Okay. Now on the mix again, it's another way of looking at different hues. So I see what I like. Maybe I want to take that third one and use that as my background. Well, I can see between those color patterns, those, what, sectagons, I guess? I can see that the light shade is an E4, E2, EE. -E. And the darker shade that I might want to use for my text is a 48, 3D, 8B. Now if I move down, notice how that top number changes. The color changes and the code changes. Okay? All right. So it gives me a nice contrast. Consistently, I'll get some kind of a contrast here. So, you can work with colors. Go ahead and use these hexadecimal values the same way that you would use color names. That's all there is to it.